Look, Mac, this is Yamaha Jack, and today we got Gunslinger Evacuation Point Suicidal, and I got a question for you. I got a question for you. What's your, uh, what's your favorite kind of sushi? Here to clean out Zeds. And if, if your favorite, and I'm, I'm talking just like, uh, sushi in general, okay? So, like, like, overall, just, just sushi, okay? It doesn't have to be a roll, you know, sashimi, nigiri, whatever you got, you know, what, whatever your favorite, uh, just kind of, you go to a sushi restaurant, you know, what's your, like, I need to have this, okay? And if, uh, if it's not a roll, if your favorite sushi isn't a roll, right, like, if you're, and then, uh, then what, what is your favorite roll, too? I mean, if your favorite sushi is a, you know, California roll, then your favorite roll is probably also a California roll. We're gonna die on wave one. It's embarrassing. What's your favorite sushi, and what's your favorite roll? For me, my favorite, uh, my favorite sushi's got to be. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not original here. It's not a very unique outlook on it, but uh, just some good old tuna belly sashimi is like, oh, so good. It's really, really good. I love that. It's expensive, you know. Like from my local restaurant, it's like eighteen dollars or something for a couple little pieces of tuna belly. <laughs> But uh, totally worth it, in my opinion. It's so good. It's so rich and, like, just <clears throat> love it. It's really, really good. I can't get it often because it's, like, expensive. <laughs> but when uh, when I feel like splurging, that's definitely what I get. And my favorite roll, my favorite uh, roll is... Uh, I, think, I think that my favorite roll is definitely a little bit of a... Uh, a more unique perspective on it because my favorite role is actually a kappa it's uh just cucumber it's just a cucumber roll i love them and anytime and pretty much anytime i go to a sushi restaurant i'm uh, i'm getting i'm getting a cucumber roll because it's not expensive it's not expensive you know it's cheap. It's affordable. Anytime I'm going there, I have the money for it, okay? Because if I don't have the money for that, I should not be at a sushi restaurant because that's, like, the cheapest thing on the menu. Um, it tastes better than, like, most rolls, I think, personally. And, uh, I don't know. It just, it just, it just, it's really, really good. It's just cucumber, rice, and, like, seaweed. Cucumber, yeah, cucumber, rice, and seaweed. I thought I didn't say cucumber, but it was the first word I said. Um, Who is this mysterious I don't know. It just, just for me, it just tastes really good. Like you put a little bit of soy sauce on it, and it's just, it's, it's delightful, truly delightful. So that's what I have every time I order sushi. I like to get a little bit of tuna belly, and if I can, you know, I might uh, go, go for like a, a roll with it or something, just because it's a little bit more affordable. Um, But, uh, not always, because e even, even when it is, you know, more affordable for tuna, you know, more, more affordable for tuna belly is not necessarily the same thing as being just affordable. You know, they, uh, they don't necessarily go hand in hand. So, I'm not doing that. I'm taking my shortcut. But, uh, yeah, those, those are my favorite. What's your favorites? And if you don't eat sushi, then why not? You know what's uh, what's holding you back? Is it the fear of, uh, of raw fish? Is it the uh, is it inaccessible to to you where you live? Have you just never had the motivation to try it? Why aren't you uh, Why aren't you trying it? Because I love sushi. I'm a I'm a huge fan of sushi. I think if I could uh, if I could only eat one food for the rest of my life, it'd probably be you know like one. You know, like genre of food, it would be sushi. Almost, almost definitely, just because it's a it's a very versatile thing. You got so many different rolls and so many different fish, and I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be fish. Even like you can get a, a sushi roll that's not fish. You know, I mean, I'm not sure if it technically is sushi, but um, you know. I think colloquially, I don't. I can never say the word colloquially, colloquially, 
How do you how do you say that word? Define colloquially. Colloquially. Yeah, colloquially. It just, it sounds weird to me. I know how to say it. It just it sounds weird to me. It doesn't sound like a word that should exist. I think colloquially we uh we definitely think that it, or like call it sushi, even though it might not necessarily technically be. I don't know what the definition of sushi is. You know what? Sushi define um Google Translate, I guess. Um, how do I? There it is. Translate from Japanese. Yes, I know what sushi. What 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 does sushi mean though? Or is it just what it is? Um, I was wondering if it was like a word or something that might have meant something. Yeah, it's just it, it, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I I I I, I guess it's not sushi if you have like barbecue chicken or something but I think I think colloquially would still refer to it as sushi even though it's like not but uh, yeah I don't know my mother uh, the only reason my mother doesn't enjoy sushi is because of the seaweed actually she has uh, I mean I think it's a mental block more than anything else but she uh, she kind of like feels like she's choking when she tries to eat it she can't really like chew on the seaweed, so I uh, I think it's a mental block, just just the seaweed kind of scaring her. Um, but like you're not gonna choke on it, you just chew it like normal food, and then you just eat it like normal, you know, and it's fine. But she's not uh, she's not able to to get past that uh, that mental barrier that she's kind of put up. I think one day she like choked on it or something, I don't, like just chew your food. <laughs> but uh, so she's not able to. To eat it anymore, which is sad to a certain extent because it means that uh, that we don't get to eat sushi as much, but at the same time, you know, it's not that big a deal because I can just go eat sushi myself. I don't have to involve them. No, but uh, it, is a, it is a thing, right? I think that a lot of people are scared of the, the seaweed. I think a lot of people aren't necessarily put off by the raw fish in it, um, and are instead just kind of afraid of the uh, the black, like, wrapper, you know? Because it looks like a wrapper, you know? Like, it doesn't necessarily look like food. So, like, mentally your brain might be like, don't eat that. That's not safe to eat. You can't, that's that's a wrapper. You can't eat that wrapper, you know? You might, you might have that kind of a uh, situation. I don't. But I can see how it happened. Something fun's coming. I know a lot of people who are put off by the the seaweed, especially uh, in particular with um, rolls like the uh, the kappa, with the uh, the sea the the seaweed on the outside, because uh, it's it's like a lot more prominent and and it's it's a lot uh, scarier for sure if if, uh, if the the seaweed is something that's kind of putting you off. But, uh, I enjoy it. <laughs> I like it. I'm not really that bothered by it, so I just eat it. It's yummy. I order sushi, uh, it's probably the most common thing I order, I think, for for lunch. For, for dinner, I think, um, poutine's probably the most common thing I order. I talk about poutine, uh, reasonably frequently. And it always, it always kind of blows my mind when I think about how people in other countries just don't have it. <laughs> like, like, just don't eat it, you know? Um, like, to, to, to the extent where a lot of them don't even know, like, what it is. Like, I have, uh, I have a friend who was asking, like, what, what should... Uh, they were, they were asking what they should have for, for dinner, and I was like, well, you should have poutine, obviously. That's the correct choice all the time. And they're like, oh, yeah, I, I think I have all the, the stuff I need for that. Um, I'll, uh, I'll make some poutine tonight. So I'm like, you just have, like, cheese curds <laughs> lying around your house? Really? That's, that's sick. She's like, no, no, we, 
we don't, uh, I, I forget exactly how it went, but she, she made, uh, you know, somehow we got on to, to her not thinking that cheese curds were a part of poutine, and I'm like, no, that's like the main ingredient. <laughs> it's, it's, that's what makes it poutine, um, is the cheese curds. Um, and, uh, but, but her understanding of, of poutine was just fries and, and cheese. I'm like, nah, it's just fries and cheese. <laughs> it's not poutine, it's just fries and cheese, you know? I Which, which you know, if, if you're into that, like, I got no problem with it. But it's, it's not poutine. You know? Like, it's, it's definitively just not. So... Um, she ended up, uh, she ended up learning that uh, it's gravy, fries, and uh, cheese curds. I have another friend who will argue on occasion that uh, you can replace the cheese curds with mozzarella. Also, just factually wrong. It still tastes good. If you don't have cheese curds, make poutine, replace the cheese curds with like mozzarella or something, okay? It still tastes fine. It's got to be like a, like a, a fairly low moisture mozzarella, but um, you know, it's fine. It tastes okay. It's not that bad, but my god. But uh, it's not poutine. What, what, what you're eating when you do that is not poutine. It's very similar, but it's just like not. Um, you need you need curds for for the true poutine experience. Because uh, like good cheese curds, they got this this really like rubbery squeakiness to them, you know. And uh, it's just it's a very different experience to uh, to like mozzarella or something. Which again is fine if if that's what you got. Like it's it's better than not even trying to have poutine. But and I'll order it when I go to a restaurant. But I'm like, it's ain't poutine, dude. What what you give me ain't poutine. You need you need the cheese grits. But it's uh it's always incredible to me when I think about how people in other parts of the world just don't even have uh, poutine. Don't like don't don't even have it. Like I've never had it. It's not accessible to them. It's not available where they live. You know. They might have all the ingredients for it, but the idea of putting them all together has just, like, literally never crossed their mind. Insane to me. And it's like... You know, I'm sure it's the same way for other people who live in other parts of the world, right? Now you're gonna come up over here. Like, I'm sure there are people who live in... You know... Um... I'm trying to think of a place with, uh... I mean, that's the thing, I guess, is that I couldn't think of it, you know? Like, I'm, I'm sure that there are people in India who are like, I can't even believe nobody's ever had this before. Like, there are people who just never eat this, you know? I, I don't know what it is, but, like, that's the point, is that I don't even know what it is, right? Like, just just because of where you live, you have this uh, this cuisine that's, uh, that you're used to, that you're accustomed to. And the thought of uh, of going somewhere else and having that cuisine not be accessible to you just like at all is 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 kind of mind-boggling you know when when you have a, a specific way of life that you're kind of used to it's kind of incredible to think about how uh, other people live so 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 differently to uh, to such an enormous degree you know but it's uh, it's the same everywhere right No matter where you go, you've got your uh, your local cuisines, you've got your local uh, dishes, probably even to like the city, you know, like I live um, by Nanaimo, and uh, you may never have heard of it, but there's this uh, like sweets, um, dessert thing called an Nanaimo bar, it was made in Nanaimo, that's where I was born actually, um, but I didn't. I have no memory of living there. We moved pretty quick. <laughs> um, I think I might have a vague. I think when I was one, I yeah. I don't. I don't. I, I couldn't like. I don't. I don't have any memory of the place, but I, I definitely have some memories of uh, living there. I think. Um, I wouldn't have. Or maybe did, did I? I don't. I don't remember when we moved. It might have been like a month after I was born. I honestly can't remember. Um, you know, I was 
really quite young at that time. My memory around that time is a little bit foggy. I hope you can forgive me. But, uh... You know, I would, um... You are here to clean out right, yeah, no, they, they, uh, they have Nanaimo bars there. And, yeah, I'm not the only person who lives near summer with a, you know, very localized, you know, special cuisine. Certainly not. Right? Like, like anywhere you go, they're, they're always going to have their own... At least a special way of doing things, you know, like you'll have a, you know, a New York bagel or something, you know, like, and and it's it's your own little thing that you get for for living there, right? And uh, everybody else doesn't get it because they don't live there. And you might take pride in that, or you might uh, feel disappointed by that that other people aren't getting to experience this. But you know, one way or the other, you get to, you get to have that thing. And, it's kind of incredible that uh, no matter where you go, there are, there's always going to be something like that, but they're so, so rarely the same thing, you know? Like, so rarely is it, uh, do you go to somewhere else where, you know, they decided to make sushi for the first time. They're like, yeah, we have sushi here. Well, I mean, it's kind of a bad example because it's everywhere these days, but... Um, you know, you don't go somewhere else and get an Nanaimo bar. You might get something similar to it. It's, uh, I believe it's, like... A weird cheesecake with um, chocolate and no cheese and some kind of filling and stuff. I don't I don't know what the ingredients in a Nanaimo bar. What are they? It's a terrible way to describe it. Nanaimo bar. It's got like this crumble bit. Yeah, it's a layered bar cookie. So I'll show you this real quick. It's this thing. So you kind of like the cheesecake. It's not cheese though. It's got like a really thick crumble, you know? Coconut, yeah, 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 yeah. Heavy cream, custard. Right, it's a custard with some chocolate and other such nonsense. But that was made, uh, you know, in my uh, my birth town, where I uh, where I didn't grow up, but where I was born, and. You, know, you might never have heard of it. You might never have heard of an Nanaimo bar. <laughs> and then, and I'm sure there's cuisine where you're from that I've never heard of. You know, it's just it's, just, it's always uh, it's always crazy to me to think about it because I take poutine for granted, right? I take poutine for granted as a Canadian, and uh, you know, whenever I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna, I don't know what I, I want for dinner tonight. You know, I'm like, I don't really know what I, I kind of want. I always I always default to poutine. You know. Like, if I'm, like, you know, not in the mood to make something, not in the mood to go out, I'm going to be ordering some food. I don't really know what I want. Do I want uh, Do I want a sandwich? Do I want this? Do I want that? I don't know. I'm just going to have poutine. It's the default, you know, the the always there fallback. And it doesn't matter, like, what restaurant I'm ordering from. You know, any restaurant I go to is going to have poutine. Any restaurant I go to, pretty much, is going to have uh, is gonna have poutine. McDonald's, A&W, White Spot, you know, Boston Pizza. You, know, you name a, a restaurant. They sell poutine. KFC, Burger King. I'm trying to think of, uh, of restaurants that I know were, are global. Um, but, uh, you know, pizza joints will have uh, poutine on occasion. <laughs> like, like it's, it's, it, there, there are very few restaurants that you can go to that aren't, like, hyper-specialized that, uh, that you can't get poutine from. Like, if I go to a Japanese restaurant, you know, obviously they're not. Usually they won't have poutine. Sometimes they will, um, but usually they won't. They'll typically have, uh, you know, a donburi and um, bento and whatever other kind of weeb stuff that uh, they can fit in there to appeal to the weebs. And then, uh, and then possibly some sushi on the side as well, and uh, tempura of course. But uh, you know, like sometimes they also have poutine, but. Uh, yeah, it's just, and unless it's a hyper-specialized place, you're usually going to find poutine there. And uh, there's some people in the world who don't have that. In fact, most people in the world don't have that. We're not, uh, we're, we're a large country, but we don't have the biggest population. What is the population of Canada? It's like, uh, 200 million? No. No. I was thinking the United States. That's right. No, no, no. Canada has... Like 40 million, 37.59 million. 
I was thinking of the United States, which has 328 million. I don't know why. But yeah, no, you can't, we don't have many people. You know, like, like if we just take a look here, like, uh, New York State. The New York State population is 19 million. There are half as many people in New York as there are in all of Canada. It's like a bloody Dickens novel out here. All of Canada combined only makes up twice the total population of just New York State. <laughs> Which is like... You know... Insane to me. And it's, it's, it's kind of it's strange. When you when you grew up here, because Vancouver is is pretty close to me. Vancouver is a big city. Vancouver is a a large city. You know what? Let's let's continue looking at it. New York, uh, Vancouver population. Vancouver's population is six hundred and seventy five thousand. Um. Vancouver size is one hundred and fifteen kilometers squared. And then New York City's population in size is quite a bit bigger. That's 783 kilometers squared as opposed to the, what was it, like 115 kilometers squared? So yeah, it's like quite a bit bigger. But it has 8.4 million people in that city. So yeah, it's quite a bit bigger. But I, I feel like that population kind of... I feel like it's a lot more dense, you know what I mean? I'm not sure exactly, but to me it kind of feels like a lot more dense. And Vancouver is the biggest city I've ever been to. Like, just just actually, genuinely speaking. I'm, I went to California once. Um, don't think we stayed in any like particularly large cities. Definitely didn't do much walking around. We were there for, for Disneyland. Um, and I don't remember most of it. Um, and, and again, most of it was Disneyland, so it's, it's not really... Like, we, we did much touring of the place. We, we went there for Disneyland. We, we stayed mostly at, at Disneyland. Um, but, uh... So, so Vancouver is, like, the biggest city I've ever been to. You know, actually, no. Um, Edmonton population. 981,000. Edmonton population and size. Um, yeah, they have, like, a million people, so I guess I've been there. Medicine Hat population is, yeah, okay, I didn't think they were big, but I just had to check. They have, like, 60,000 people. Um, so Edmonton's the biggest city I've ever been to with a million people, and the size, how big is Edmonton? 684 kilometers. So, I, I Vancouver's probably a bigger city. Well, like, physically speaking, it's much smaller, but, uh... From a density perspective, Vancouver is definitely much higher. Um, but so, like those, those are my, those are when when I think of like a big city, you know, like a, a populated city, dense city, you know, like those are the cities that that I think of, you know, like I get uh, like weirdly like weirded, like I just I, I the last time I went to to Vancouver, my memories mostly, honestly, are of just being like shocked by how little I could see honestly like just just walking around the the city it was like every all the buildings were like huge there were skyscrapers everywhere and I'm like this is huge this is like I was getting like vertigo and I was like uncomfortable and I was like yeah no I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a big city kind of girl <laughs> like it's not for me it's not for me and then it's like Relatively speaking, Vancouver is not even like, you know, the biggest city in the world. You know, like from from like a popular like a density perspective, you know, like there are, there are cities that are so much more densely populated than that, and uh, it was uh, it was scary enough there. And I, I have friends who live uh, in, like, New York or something like that. And they're like, yeah, you know, you, you just come over. It's not that bad. It's not that busy. I'm like, no. <laughs> no. When you come from a population... When you come from a town of a population of, like... 
you know, 30,000, 20,000. The reality is, when, when you go to a city that has like several hundred thousand people in it, it's just uncomfortable. There's, there's just too many people, there's too many like stores, there's too many buildings, like everything just feels so smothered and, and cluttered and, and, and gross and uncomfortable. But so you know, some people live in that and they come to my and they come to, to you know where I live or, or somewhere like where I live and and they're like, I don't know how you how you live. I mean all the stores are closed after nine o'clock. <laughs> like, well yeah, you know, nobody's going shopping after nine o'clock. Everybody's got work in the morning. They're like, Well what about people who work graveyards? Uh well if nobody's open past nine o'clock, then who has to work graveyards? Do you ever think about that one? There's just there aren't enough people. To, to to warrant it you know they're there where you live you might be able to order uh, order like delivery or something like that at midnight cut off for me is 11:30, and I'm already like wow these people are open late it's incredible it's awesome you know just recently the only 24-hour grocery store well I say recently I think it was like a year or two ago but uh, the only 24-hour grocery store was closed. I was really disappointed by that because I used to stop by on my way home from work and uh, pick up some groceries or whatever. But they uh, they closed because I guess they just weren't getting people going at 2 a.m., <laughs> which is fair. Um, besides me, I mean it was always empty when I went. But uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not living in like a super small town or anything like that. You know, like it's not. Uh, with Haskellwin or something, you know, like, uh, definitely keep my doors locked, definitely, uh, don't know everybody around me, we're not, uh, you know, this, this community kind of thing, we keep to ourselves, mostly, um, but I, I live in an area where, like, I look out my window and I can see a lot of trees, I, I, I live in an area where if I'm walking down the street, I can see the mountains in the distance, the buildings don't get in the way, you know, it's, uh, th these are things that you don't really think about, so much until you live or you're visiting somewhere where you don't get those and you just like feel so claustrophobic you know like there aren't skyscrapers really near me at all there there are now uh, a few apartment buildings that have gone up which is disappointing um, but uh, it's you know It's okay. Not too many. Not too many. And I hope yeah, I hope it stays that way. I just I couldn't I couldn't I can't I can't live in an area where anywhere any way I look I'm gonna see more buildings. You know, like I need to be able to see the nature. I need to be, see the mountains in the distance. I want to be able to see the ocean if I go for you know a short drive to a, you know a clearing of area. You know, like the area around me is is primarily made up of uh, of like forest. Honestly, um, and uh, it's nice, and I, I you, you take you, you don't realize how nice it is until until you kind of experience not having it. You know, you don't know how good it is until it's gone. But I just I couldn't I couldn't live in somewhere like Vancouver or New York City or something like that. Like it's just there's too many people, dude. There's too many people. There's too many buildings. There's too much stuff. Too much stuff going on. I can't handle that kind of uh, activity. I need I need a more slow life, you know. That's what I like. Anyway, that's gonna do it for today. So thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you like, and subscribe to see more in the future. Comment if you have anything to say, and I'll see you next time. I'm gonna go read that stupid manga that I hate. Bye.